2 a.m., a warehouse stops printing shipping labels. Not a little slow, not will reboot later, the labels just don't come out. The line backs up, someone hits stop, and suddenly the whole building is doing that expensive thing, where people stand still while time keeps charging you. The call chain starts, night supervisor to IT, IT to the one person whose name is still in a document titled like a warning, legacy systems, do not touch unless on fire. That person remotes in, opens a folder that looks like it hasn't been reorganized since Windows 98, and clicks an executable with a name that feels like a confession, shipping tool final.exe. A small gray window appears, square buttons, a grid that looks like it predates the word UX. Somewhere in the background, a file called msv60.dll is doing silent work that nobody in the building knows exists. Then the printer wakes up again. If you trace enough gray box programs back, payroll tools, inventory screens, reporting dashboards, you keep finding the same signature, Visual Basic. And the twist is, Visual Basic didn't start as a language for business apps. That's the version everybody remembers. It started as something stranger, a tool meant to let people design their own Windows experience. And it nearly got buried inside Microsoft for reasons that had nothing to do with technology. Before Visual Basic, Windows development felt like paying a toll every mile. If you wanted a window, you didn't start with your idea. You started with the operating system's rituals, scaffolding, just to open a blank frame, message handling that punished mistakes, and APIs that made you feel like you were bargaining with the machine instead of building with it. It rewarded specialists, people who could spend half a day wiring up the skeleton of an app and still have energy left to build the part users actually asked for. Meanwhile, BASIC existed as the friendlier opposite. Immediate, forgiving, practical, type a line, run it, see results. BASIC didn't just teach syntax, it taught control. But BASIC mostly lived in a different universe, text screens and DOS, not the graphical workplace Windows was moving toward. So Windows had a contradiction at its core. It wanted to be the platform for everyone, but building for it demanded you speak the operating system's private language. What came next wasn't just a new language, it was a new interface to building software. The Visual Basic story starts earlier than 1991. In the late 80s, Alan Cooper was building a Windows shell construction set, a tool that would let different users shape Windows around their needs, instead of forcing one interface onto everyone. The Spark, according to Cooper, clicked during a sales call tied to Bank of America. Windows had to serve highly technical admins, semi-technical analysts, and people unfamiliar with computers, like tellers. The conclusion was simple, don't build one shell, build a tool that lets each group build their shell, Cooper's prototype had a palette of drag-and-drop elements, buttons, list boxes, placed onto forms. They weren't even called controls at first. One of the developers, Michael Geary, says Cooper wanted to call them Waldos. Geary renamed them Gizmos, and Microsoft later settled on controls. The tool was visual. It was event-driven. It even had users connect behaviors by drawing links between elements. And in the middle of all that, Geary remembers hunting for a name for one element sending a message to another, until the phrase fire an event stuck. Then the story hits the moment that changes everything. Cooper demos the tool inside Microsoft. Gabe Newell, years before Valve, stops the demo and says, essentially, Bill Gates has to see this. A month later, Cooper is back and Gates watches the demo and asks his team, why can't we do stuff like this? Gates wants the project, deals get made. The prototype becomes a serious internal product, codenamed Ruby, then politics collide with engineering. Officially, Ruby doesn't ship as the Windows 3.0 shell because it isn't identical to OS 2's shell. But Cooper's account points to internal politics. At that time, Microsoft was developing Windows while also jointly developing OS2 with IBM. And Ruby becomes collateral in that tension. Ruby gets orphaned. Cooper tries to buy it back. Gates refuses. And then Gates does something that quietly reshapes software history. He looks at Ruby's visual front end and thinks, not shell builder, but basic. He loves basic. He believes the future of programming needs a visual component. And that's the pivot. Take Ruby's visual way of building interfaces, replace its small internal language with BASIC, and you've just invented a new kind of programming environment. Inside Microsoft, that effort becomes a project with a name that sounds like a storm system. Thunder. In May 1991, Visual BASIC 1.0 ships for Windows. And suddenly, the order of software creation changes. You don't begin with scaffolding, you begin with a form, an empty window. You place the interface the way humans naturally think, buttons where hands want to click, fields where eyes want to read, labels where meaning needs to sit. Then you double-click a control and write the part that matters. When the user does this, do that. That sounds obvious now because the industry absorbed it, but it was a psychological breakthrough. Windows development finally felt close. It felt like you could be useful before you knew everything. And that's what made it spread. Not just among professional developers, among people with problems. The analyst tired of building the same report every week, 
the office manager who needed a cleaner intake form, the IT generalist who couldn't get budget for a real system but could build a small tool by Friday. But before we follow what happens next, before Visual Basic stops being a breakthrough for individuals and starts becoming something businesses quietly depend on, a quick word from the people helping make this story possible. This video is brought to you by Convex, the modern back-end platform built for developers who want real-time reactive apps without stitching a dozen services together. Convex gives you the back-end muscle to make your apps real-time, reactive, and scalable, without the boilerplate, without the ops overhead, and without wrestling with infrastructure. And then there's Convex Chef, an AI app builder that doesn't just generate code, it understands structure. Chef wires up authentication, data models, background jobs, file storage, and real-time sync on top of Convex's reactive system. You describe the app, Chef assembles it, fully functional, real-time, ready to deploy. Try it yourself at convex.link slash codesource. Describe what you want to build, and see how far you can get without writing a single back-end line, while keeping your app fast, clean, and future-proof. Now back to Visual Basic, because this is where easy turns into everywhere. Visual Basic becomes unstoppable when it connects to office records, customers, orders, inventory, invoices. Through the 90s it gets brutally good at what companies actually pay for. Database-backed forms, fast internal tools, changes shipped week by week, speed wins, com and ActiveX pour gasoline on it. Now you can bolt on grids, charts, reporting, assembly line software. The debt shows up later, an OCX that won't register, a missing dependency, an app that works on one machine and breaks on another, DLL hell becomes a coping joke. And still, the trade stays worth it, because nothing beats shipping. In 1998, Visual Basic 6 lands, and it's the version companies commit to. Not because it's perfect, because it's steady, easy to hire for, surrounded by a mature ecosystem, and because it sits on top of years of internal code nobody wants to throw away. This is when a quick tool for our team stops being temporary and starts being how the place runs, billing, scheduling, reporting, the screens people trust because they've trusted them for years. The same pattern repeats until it becomes legacy. Someone fixes a pain, the tool spreads because it works, the business depends on it, the builder leaves, and the software stays. If you've lived in VB6, you can feel how it grew, event handlers everywhere, pragmatic shortcuts, and the line that's funny until it's tied to payroll. On error resume next. In 2002, Microsoft ships Visual Basic.net marketed like the next step, but built on a new foundation. It still looks like Visual Basic. The name is there, the keywords are there. But for a VB6 shop with 10 years of code, it isn't an upgrade, it's a move. Different runtime, different libraries, different rules. Migration tools can translate the easy parts. Real applications don't live in the easy parts. They live in com glue, third-party controls, and business logic nobody wrote down because it just worked. So the honest output of that era isn't a clean conversion. It's the upgrade report. We moved what we could, the rest is yours. And that forces the only question that matters, do we rewrite software that already works? Most companies answer the same way. Not unless they're forced. A rewrite isn't just code, it's budget fights, retraining, deadlines, and the risk that the new system loses the weird edge cases, the old one handled without anyone noticing. So the visual basic world fractures. Some teams move to VB.net. Some jump to C-sharp. Many stay on VB6 for one simple reason. It still runs. And still runs. Beats might be better when the business is on the line. Microsoft ends support for the VB6 IDE on April 8, 2008. But Microsoft also can't afford to break VB6 apps overnight. Too many businesses depend on them. So the runtime keeps getting supported on Windows for compatibility. The factory closes. The machines keep operating. That isn't a clean death. It's containment. After the peak, Visual Basic becomes something you don't pick. You inherit it. VB6 stays in production because replacement is expensive, risky, and thankless, and modernizing often means downtime and angry users for a system that isn't obviously better. At the same time, VB survives where people forget to look, Microsoft Office. VBA keeps powering macros and automation, spreadsheets that behave like apps, reports made with a button, workflows built by whoever finally got tired of doing it by hand. VB.NET sticks around too, less dominant than C-sharp, but still present wherever the codebase already exists. And that's where the reputation comes from. Visual Basic is the thing you get handed when someone leaves. The jokes are real, but they miss the point. VB didn't linger because it failed. It lingered because it worked. So did Visual Basic die. It stopped being fashionable, sure, but it didn't leave. It settled into the places that can't afford downtime, orders, inventory, payroll, routine. And somewhere tonight when a warehouse printer fails and the clock says 2 a.m., someone will open a folder full of final executables, click a gray window and keep the business moving. That isn't a language dying, that's a language becoming a dependency, 